Hey, what's up, y'all? I had a pretty cool question from a student recently that I figured I'd just make into a YouTube video. They were near the end of our curriculum asking if it was possible to not have to use our boilerplate for making a full stack app or coding their own. And they were like, can I have all the awesome features of Create React app, like hot module reloading and hot module replacement, I think actually, where it will like automatically open a dev server on port 3000 or the nearest available port. It'll automatically open your browser, automatically refresh your browser. Every single time you saved your code, you didn't have to wait for Webpack to rebundle stuff and all that kind of fun things in, our, in the build process we teach in this course for that full stack boilerplate you guys use. Um, and they're wondering if they can have that, but also make it a full stack application. Do they have to like deploy a web API and reference the path of like myapi.herokuapp.com slash API slash something in their fetch request? Can they not just fetch slash API slash blogs, for example, and just get that information? That's what they wanted to find out how to do. And the answer is actually yes, you can absolutely uh, do a full stack create React app app. <laughs> and I figured this out, and this, what's really cool about it is I never knew about this feature in the package JSON. There is an option for the configuration. I went to the documentation for what a package JSON can have inside of it. I read some Medium articles about how to do this, and I thought it was really, really cool, and I figured I'd show you guys. I've actually used this, this since I figured it out, to make some uh, quick sandboxes, for example, of making a full stack Create React app, where I just test like a new UI kit or a new components or code some examples for students in a full stack create react app environment so I get all those fancy fun features. And we can achieve this via something called a proxy server, which you guys might have heard of before. It is a uh, part of a, uh, the options for the package JSON we can add in there that will say run this proxy server instead. So what I need to do is set up an express code that runs on a different port than 3000 since that's what our create react app will run on. And I needed to just say, hey, I'm gonna make some network proxy requests to local host, say 8080 for my server. And that way I can write those relative fetch requests like slash API slash blogs instead of having to write the full cross origin of local host colon 8080 slash API slash blogs. It just makes your life a bit easier and you have all of a sudden a full stack project ready to go in no time so you can sandbox and play around and test stuff in. So let's go. Uh, I'll be using port 8080 for my server, so let's do that. I'll be going into my package JSON here and uh, as one of the options pretty much anywhere in this list of stuff, let's go ahead and add the proxy option here, right there. And the proxy will be to uh, HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 8080 as our proxy server. And there we go. That's all we need to do to add this to make this into a full stack app before we actually start adding our code. So let's go ahead and do the most common dependency for making a uh, web API with Node.js, and that'll be Express. So I'm gonna go to my terminal here. And you know this is just a fresh Create React app, by the way, for posterity. As you can see, it just has a div with an H1. The index.js is your standard index.js. I made my own, and I deleted the index HTML and all the boilerplate that comes with Create React app. I cleared all that out and just made it as simple as possible. So what I need to do now is go to my command line, and we're going to be installing uh, a dependency, so npm i, and we're going to be saving it. And that's what npm i should do automatically for us. The express dependency for our full stack experience here. We're going to be this is our backend code we're going to be writing. Let's go, let's go. Oh boy. Internet is not liking me today. Taking a while to install this. There we go. All right, let's go, let's go. And in our package JSON, we can confirm we got the, in, the dependency installed for Express, and now we can write our server. So I'm gonna make a new folder here. We're gonna call it server. Inside of there, I'm gonna make a new server.js file, and let's go ahead and create a new Express server. So we're gonna say const express is equal to require the express module for this particular code here. Let's make a new express application. This is like the normal boilerplate we teach in our curriculum here. We have to have it listening on some kind of port, so we can say app.listen on port 8080 was the one I'm proxying to, so that's where I'm gonna have it run here. And you know what, I might as well give myself some kind of positive confirmation message as well. It says server listening on port, and we'll say 8080 like that, that way I have some kind of callback confirmation that says this thing is actually doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, let's go ahead and write just a, you know, an application level get request so we can test this with, for example, and we can make it to the path slash API slash test or something akin to that. We're gonna have our request response callback function, and we're gonna say, let's just send a response, res.json, something like uh, 
world, for example, as our response. That's what I want it to be, just the value world. I'm gonna save this file. And what we have to do now is actually get this server up and running as well as our dev server for our React codes. That's gonna be two different sets of terminals. Now, whether you're in Commander or you're on Mac and you're using your integrated uh, you know, Unix bash environment right there, you can hit Command-T for Mac or Control-T for Windows users using Commander like I am. And we can open up a new console window. Also need to go ahead and CD into my proxy fun directory right here. And now I should be able to make a new script for running my server. So what I'm gonna be doing is going over to my package JSON and including a new script, for example, called dev that will run NP or node on server server.js. And if you guys are familiar with nodemon, you can also just do that here by installing nodemon as a dependency so you have your automatic server restarting, which is what I normally do for my sandbox environments as well where I'm learning or practicing or just goofing off with code really. Uh, so let's go ahead and run that script here. NPM run dev should start up our server. Nice, worked right out of the bag, right out of the box. Let's go ahead and run NPM startup here for my React code. So now I have this server running in the background and this React server also running at the same time. That's the, the issue of trying to create a full stack React <laughs> application. There's the proxy madness H1 appearing. Awesome, we got that up and running. So we can actually test this finally now by going to my React code and let's uh, let's bring in a use effect and some use state here. So let's bring in some hooks. My use state hook and my use effect hook. We're going to go ahead and make a request for this. So we're going to say, let's see, let's start for state const, uh, we'll say, val and set val or something like that you know will be a use state that will be an initial string value there we go let's also bring in our use effect and we're going to simulate like a component did mount even though it's not really what this is uh we can go over that and uh, yeah i go over that in the curriculum with other videos we're going to uh, make a anonymous async function real quick and we're going to immediately invoke it as well let's write our try catch because we're good little coders and we go to the lengths of doing this here let r equal await, and we're gonna make a fetch get request to that API endpoint I made, which is slash API slash test. And all we need to do then is set that to state after converting the body with the r.json promise, and we can then call our set val and update it with whatever val comes back from our API. And that way down here, we can say hello, and then the value of val and an exclamation point. So. Uh, once I, well, I have autosave enabled, so it should have automatically saved this right here, which is nice. Um, and upon saving, hopefully that this proxy server now works and we should be able to see hello. And then from our server, if you recall, I wrote world as a response and we have a full stack create react app. It made a request to a proxy server, got the value world, set it to state, and now we're displaying that state. So congratulations, you have a full stack create React app. We have all the fun, fancy features like the testing suites, the automatic refreshing, the automatic browser opening, all that awesome stuff that create React app provides. And we have an express backend server. And so because we have this, I can, if you guys are interested, I can do future videos where I go ahead and wire it up to a MySQL database, start executing queries on that database and show you some other cool features you can do. I just wanted to show this kind of a uh, cool feature of package JSON where you can add a proxy server so you can write very simple and clean looking requests to start sandboxing, testing, or even building an entire app. And I will make a follow-up video showing how this is not just for testing and goofing around with. You could actually build all of your React code into a distribute, like a built bundle file essentially. And we can even launch this entire thing to Heroku as is. We'll have to do some, a little couple things in the back end to account for that. Uh, and we'll also have to account for the port that Heroku provides for us, but we can convert this to also work in deployment, believe it or not. So we can take this, the, all the features of Create React app, including its script of building itself, which I think was the uh, NPM run build, for example, to build all of our React code into a bundled app.js file, essentially. We can attach that to our index HTML, serve that index HTML in production versus development, and boom, we have this deployable, full stack boilerplate that we can build and create in no time. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. If you have interest in seeing some other cool server side stuff we can do, uh, just let me know in the comments down below and I'll be happy to do so. Otherwise, expect a follow-up video showing you how you can take this code and prepare it for Heroku or other deployment strategies. So hope you all enjoy this and have some fun.